get a bang, Whoa. and I cook you all. All around the world, I be all around the globe. Life camera action, everywhere I go. I'm in the building, you already know. I do it, I do it, I do it, I do it like a pro. Yeah. 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 DJ Sun, yes sir, let's go. 今天呢，我们将迎战的是福尔摩沙梦想家，双方呢仅有一场胜差，只要这场我们赢下比赛，我们就可以追平，并且呢回到龙头宝座。所以希望所有禁卫军的球迷朋友们可以用最大的应援声，帮我们场上的球员们加油打气。没错，那三月份呢，也是我们皇家。女王月，我们将以 Woman Empower 为主题，在三月与诸位一起感谢每一位呢，在我们国王背后最重要的那位女王，也许是你的家人，也许是你的朋友，也或者她是你的生命导师。那所以呢，我们在三月中与 Lululemon 以及 Double Pump 合作，前后举办了瑜伽课程以及女子篮球训练营。我们希望可以延续我们禁卫军的传统。推广，持续推广我们的女力，迎接这个充满感性的一个月份。那女王周这一周呢，球员们会穿上全新的球衣，进场的球迷朋友们也会拿到粉红色的限定拍拍扇，以及呢，哎，今年特别的信封袋。最后呢，还有一个皇冠，可以让大家纸皇冠戴在头上，一起帮球员加打气。没错，那当然呢。我们本周，我们在我们的女王月一样准备了非常多的城堡周边活动，有我们的 Area 零二城堡夹鞋机、王道银行以及 Girl b a l Mall 环球购物中心所准备的城堡周边小游戏。那我们也欢迎呢大家多多利用空档的时间去走走逛逛。那另外，今天还有我们的禁卫军预测。那我们禁卫军预测呢，在比赛开始前，大家可以投下你神圣的一票。我们今天要预测的是，得分来到这个总得分来到第三十八分的禁卫军是哪一位？那想要参加预测的朋友，记得要投下你神圣的一票。我们将会抽出一位，赠送环球 Online 购物金三千元礼券一张。哦，今天这个预测蛮不一样。那中场呢？我们是女王支援。这一次呢，我们邀请到球迷是和我们拉拉队 Queens 呢一起呢完成中场的挑战。哎，想要和拉拉队 Queens 呢一起做互动的，等一下呢，在我们投球的时候呢，发出你的欢呼，我们会把小球送到你的手上。没错，那今晚的比赛呢，也非常感谢我们。哥本哈根离岸风电的七十位同仁到场支持，那坐在我的左前方，那我们可以站起来跟大家挥挥手，感谢你们来支持我们的新北国王，大家给他们一点掌声好吗？欢迎你们的来。好，那今天呢，我们在包厢的贵宾呢是火星生气的朋友们，他今天呢是在我们的贵宾席呢，我们也跟他们打个招呼，非常欢迎呢大家一起来我们新庄体育馆看球赛。没错、哦，那在我们呢正式的比赛开始之前，我们今天呢也非常特别，准备了非常特别的表演，将由 Amber 以及曼平在女王主题日带来两段特别的赛前表演。首先，让我们用最大的暴动声，欢迎我们来自新北国王拉队 New Taipei Queens， we got to make some noise for 曼平。
是细胞中雨雪，四色雨露之中冒险，个孤单在四度空间，在谁快占据了下一秒的爱，热爱，热爱，忘记了未来，只能拥抱我下。大家尖叫声给我们的曼皮！哇，我们的女王果然深藏不露，在我们这个本月的女王月里面，也带来非常精彩的表演。那当然呢，表演绝对不只有这样，我们还准备了第二段精彩的表演要给大家。那大家把你们的尖叫声拿出来 ，Everybody make some noise for New Taipei Queens Amber！ 哎呀 ，This is New Taipei Queens。Bad boys, bad bad girls, party don't stop， 举起杯都别多。Bad bad boys, bad bad girls, put your hands up， 跟着节奏点头。真的太累，我把面具撕开，走进派对。熬夜加速我的身体衰退 ，But I don't give a shit， 可惜 work hard five days。Money let it burn， 去 burn it up。各种颜色拼身 ，Show me now。总有个音色提醒我不该睡，像暴力暴的顶崩崩。Feeling high， feeling high， yeah。多少 club 放我这个 ，And I'm rap star， yeah。有个女孩用着气势暧昧 ，Talk to my ear， 说想感受我的欢乐 ，Only one night， yeah。Let me sing crazy。Show to me the melody, do the song. Show me something real. Bad girls, party don't stop, 举起杯都别多。Bad bad boys, bad bad girls, put your hands up, 跟着节奏点头。背都举起来，脑子弹着 celebrate， 跟着喊你妹，管你到底疯了没？非凡有点热就热，就像在迈阿密。Damn so hard， 刚练的冰块现在在哪里散发？烫的神经让人忘却了曾经多少复杂的声音。Baby feel good， 他眼神迷离对我说 I want you bad、eh?。Call me baby， 说 I love you。Let me see you crazy。Move your body baby。Hey， this is the pain。全场尖叫声，给我们的满屏，以及我们的 Amber， 还有我们的 New Taipei Queen。感谢我们女王们准备了精彩的两段的特别表演。今日龙头之争，相信诸位已经迫不及待迎接这场新北国王面对福尔摩沙梦想家。首先为各位介绍福尔摩沙梦想家：零号陈正杰，三号吴家俊，七号林耀宗。十号丁冠浩，二十一号简浩，二十六号李德威，二十八号卢冠良，四十二号傅一德，八十八号周国生。接下来进场的是先发五人：沙汀、百，五号麦卡洛，十一号林俊吉，二十三号钱肯尼。二十四号希沃克，三十四号吉尔贝克，总教练皮尔曼，助理教练艾柏林，陈世念
，九恩发展总监田磊、总经理韩俊凯，请所有球迷朋友们将目光一致，上方打一幕。进场的是新北国王。首先为各位介绍 Number Four， 金卫军羽扇大叔李威平。Number Twenty Four， 关键大心脏小胖洪志山。Number Ten。金卫军弓箭手，微笑射手 ，J J 简又哲。Number seven two， 观众就爱看小丽，林立人。Number nineteen， 皇家大锁，邦哥林金宝。Number three， 金卫军陈俊南。Number seventeen， 我大苏西苏志俊。Number eleven， 新北皇家坦克王柏志。Number five， 禁区猛兽熊大 ，Baron Mullins。接下来进场的是新美国王先发五人 ，Starting five。Number thirty three， 城堡守护者 ，Christian Anyway。Number fifty， 警卫局门神 Q， 关西 Davis。Number fifty five， 空中冲锋部队 Kenny Manigal。Number one， 左右开口 Joseph Lee， 林书伟。Finally, number six. 
敬畏军事官长，新北的阿美族战士杨志明。球队 Rama 向助理球员 Marco Bella 林振宇，球队经理洪志虎，球队经理洪成渊，心理咨询师 Clay Dana， 首席体能教练张崇熙，体能教练刘振宇，防护员邱博凯、吴崇豪，数字界影片分析师李维恩，总经理毛家恩，执行长陈庆生，董事长王文祥。好的，那我们的比赛开始之前呢，我们要来邀请大家呢，跟我们一起为我们新美国加油应援。那在我们的啊皇家女王愉悦呢，当然要来跟我们邀请我们的新美国王拉队来到我们的场中间。一起为我们新美国王加油应援，成为我们国王后面最重要的每一位女王们。好的，我们的女王们都就位完毕了，麻烦大家拿起你们手中的排排赛，来一起为我们新美国王加油应援。首先，我们要先从我们的防守一起来。All right， 地在上，让我们一起来捍卫我们的王城吧。Let's go。防守，防守，防守，防守，防守，防守，防守，防守。All right， 这就是我们的防守。接下来呢，也就是在我们进攻的时候，会用新北国王。All right， 地对枪 ，Jump the B。新北国王，新北国王，新北国王，新北国王。That's right， 这就是我们的防守以及我们的新北国王，我们的防守以及进攻。那当然了，接下来要播放我们的主题曲，在这一季势必拿下属于我们的胜利。We got it。Corner City, everybody. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, seniors and youth. The high school, college boys and girls are done with their basketball season, but the pro season marches on. Welcome to this Plus League Tuesday night basketball game between the Formosa Dreamers against the New Taipei Kings. The number one and number two teams, respectively, all season clash in Xingzhuang Gymnasium. On the last game of Week 20, here are the current standings. Dreamers, two straight losses, coinciding with the Kings, two straight wins, plus them one game apart in the standings. The Dreamers do have a head-to-head -head advantage. Pilots have won eight of the nine after the Lunar New Year's break. Gain a lot of ground, while the Lioners at 50% occupy the last playoff position as of now. On the Mandarin broadcast is Aaron Yang Zhenlei and Mark Tionghui. I'm Ryan Chen, taking care of you guys on the English stream here in the Plus League. 全民朋友要听杨振磊跟田永奎的讲评，当然就按照我们官方的中文讲评，中文转播直播。谢谢你的观看，记得 Plus League 的 YouTube 比赛都要按赞。What was the last thing I left off? Well, as I mentioned, the Lioners in that number four spot, which would be in the Plus League playoffs if we fast forward ahead, or if we started the playoffs right now, as they like to say back in the United States of America, where I'm from. And the past Sunday, the Braves have lost an unprecedented, unprecedented five straight, while the Steelers. Snapped a five-game losing streak in the number three spot, but lurking not too far away are the Pilots, led by that man on screen, head coach Yugi Kaminos. 
There's Jamie Perlman, his first year leading the Dreamers, trying to bounce back from a um, rather disappointing performance, shall we say, last week against the uh, Pilots. And by last week, I mean this past weekend. We talked to Randall Walco pregame about what was end up being a historical defeat for the Dreamers after a 27-point lead in the first half. First asked about what they learned and what his personal form has been recently. Uh, yeah, no, so um, that was a tough one. Uh, you know, watching back and, and seeing all the little plays that, you know, we could have made to, to have the out outcome be um, different was definitely tough. Um, but, you know, in basketball, stuff like that happens. A couple years ago, we did the same thing, you know, on our court. Um, and ultimately, that was just something, you know, it's not a total loss if uh, we're able to take, you know, some lessons about it, especially on how to close games, because um, we're going to be in a lot of close games um, from this stretch forward as it gets really, really competitive. Um, so, you know, overall, you know, it was tough, uh, but I think that makes us hungry to, to come back and have some good performances going forward, um, because that was one where we felt like we probably should have had. Uh, so, yeah, I feel like this is, um, like I've said before in some of the other interviews, uh, this is... I'm reaching the point now where I'm feeling the most comfortable that I have all season and the most comfortable I've been in the last, you know, two, two years. Um, so, you know, it feels good to be able to get back to, to playing the way that, you know, I'm, I'm used to playing and uh, the way that I know I can on a consistent basis. Um, you know, it was such a long journey and such a long process to get back to where I am. And, um, you know, being able to, to play at this level and hopefully sustain that through the rest of the season is something that, I've been looking forward to it for a long time, and I'm just happy that I'm able to, to play that way. Number 24, Randall Walco injured his knee down in Kaohsiung a couple seasons ago, so a long way back. So far on the season, turned in 572 total minutes played. Has it been an above average score and high amongst the league leaders with a plus 130? As for his traditional stats, about 10.7 points per game, 4.3 rebounds per game, but that's only on 27 minutes played. I do expect that perhaps Randall Walco will get stretched out just a little bit more as the season has gone on. Unfortunately for the Dreamers, they have seen a big comeback against them. This season is the Pilots 27 points. Last year, the Braves came back from 26 down to the Dreamers, and in the second season, the Kings were able to do so on a rather modest now looking at 20 point deficit against the Dreamers. And one really big key that Randall Walco said is they're gonna be playing in tight games. Interestingly enough, these two teams, because of the scheduling, will put, face each other very frequently in the next stretch. The Dreamers will have the Kings on their schedule, including tonight, four of the next eight games. And the Kings have the Dreamers four of their next six games. Well, it is a small league we have here in the Plus League, so sometimes those scheduling quirks will work out that way. On the other side, Byron Mullins speaking about the team momentum they've recently built up and how he plans to contribute joining into the fray after an in Yeah, it was a long time waiting for me to get back on the court. You know, two and a half, three months is a, a very long time. It was very frustrating, but, you know, I've done a lot of rehab, um, just pretty much everything under the sun. And uh, it feels good to be back on the court. And it feels good even more to get two wins. You know, we were, it's been a long time since we won. I think it was over a month. So it felt great to get those wins. And when it comes to playing time, you know, um, I've played 24 minutes in Fubon. I played 17 minutes with the Steelers. Um, all due respect to those two teams, those, those two games were blowout games. So uh, very well could have played 30 minutes both of those games. Um, but most more importantly, we got the win and we took care of business. So. Yeah, just going out and playing Kings basketball. You know, obviously, uh, they've won the three out four, like you said. Um, the Dreamers have a very good team, very good coached. Um, but at the same time, I don't think we've played against the Dreamers with a full roster. And we, we go in tonight still with that. Uh, but, you know, we can't use that as an excuse. We just got to go out and play the way we've been playing the last two games, um, even so the ESL games. So. And it's a home game, so it's been a while since we've been home, and we're going to feed off the, the energy of the crowd. And uh, we, we know what, what's at stake here. It's a tie for first place against the Dreamers, and um, we got them the two out of our next three games. So um, just not tonight. we got to look forward to you know playing them again on Sunday and, and, and setting a message tonight. 
Hey, Byron Mullins might make a good commentator. The Kings, accurately speaking, did lose four straight in a stretch where they last defeated the Steelers in plus league play on February 6th. And in these stages, Super League competition, not to forget about that, they did tally up four straight wins, the last one coming January 10th. Anyways, to Byron Mullins, he's one of the statistical leaders and real practical leaders of the Kings being named the import captain. Byron Mullins among the leaderboards of points at 18.7, among the league leaders of rebounds of 11.7. Good to have Byron Mullins back, the bear they call him in around these parts. After returning, two wins and no losses. There you see highlighted in season four, nine wins, three losses when he's in the lineup. The scoring averages go up. The rebounds might go down a little bit, but the paint scoring definitely gets a nice boost. And funny enough, that also comes off some of the outside shooting threat Byron Mullins possesses or poses. On the season, he's actually raised his three-point percentage up to 29% thanks to a very strong game a couple weeks ago against the Braves. And that'll open up things on the inside. As we get a look at the officials for tonight, it's Huang Zhenfeng and Hong Yong Yu and Huang Xiaohan from left to right. Now time to look at the starting lineups for the Dreamers. They'll be wearing white. Brandon Gilbeck, Randall Walker, Chris McCullough, number 11, Ling Junji, and number 23, Kenny Chen, Chen Kuni. On the King side, Quincy Davis will get the start alongside rookie Christian Anigwe, Yang Jimmy is in there along with Joseph Lin and Kenny Manigal. This is the fifth time these two teams are facing each other. As you'll notice, the uh, Kings will be wearing this year's edition of their woman empowerment pink jerseys. It's ranged from a straight pink set to a pink jersey with a kind of reflective mirror font. That was definitely not easy on the referees out there. As part of the festivities, the uh, Kings have also offered 20% off tickets of Section B and C for any person with the name that includes one of the characters that has a radical or a part of the Mandarin character with a new or a woman. In terms of more active things, this month they've had a yoga session with, I believe, Ling Jingpong, and they've also had a basketball camp in collaboration with the, uh, the basketball content creators here in Taiwan of Double Pump and Liu Xingye. The WSBL player with Taiwan Telecommunications. All right, enough pregame notes. It's time for basketball as the Dreamers will get started. Chris McCullough will take a deep shot and bury it. Chris McCullough was a former member of the Kings all the way back in season one. Unfortunately, he sustained a very serious knee injury. Cross screen for Davis, but forced out on the block. And Joseph Lin with Aji in front of him. The whole dribbles to the left, they get the switch. To the left corner, Anigwe, yes! As mentioned, Christian Anigwe, a rookie out of University of California, Davis, looking at his three-point shooting on the season, not too shabby, 10 for 37. Ball going back, Dreamers will keep possession as Aji looking for a high screen. Gilbeck sets it up on the left and the ball gets away. Numbers for the Kings at least get a mismatch as Davis on the switch. A little sidestepper, but in and out. Good result for the Dreamers defensively as a quick down low for Gilbeck. Davis will be called for the hold. Brandon Gilbeck actually was out of the Dreamers lineup, and that perhaps is something that I'm sure their staff is thinking about when it comes to that big turnaround effort. And actually, if you ask me, there were some warning signs as Walco, dangerous inbounds. Joseph Lynn was all over it. Now they get it to Gilbeck on the left block. And it's gonna be a travel as looks like Gilbeck did not establish a solid dribble. 
So to extend on that point, Gilbeck has played all of the fourth season we've had so far. About 11 points, 11 rebounds, which is pretty solid. Yeah, I'm me. That one's halfway down and out. Here come the uh, Dreamers. Gilbeck's a plus league leading plus 153. Pun unintended. But if you include last season, regular season, he started, in fact, in 37 straight games as a turnover, kind of blocking out from position. And Gilbeck immediately going to Coach Perlman. They're going to try to talk something over. And uh, yeah, that's uh, not exactly a legal push. Certainly, Quincy Davis will do his best to battle down low, but uh, can't just take an advantage like that. Joseph Lynn with the right hand off the glass and in. Joseph Lynn's assist numbers have been off the charts recently. Our broadcast partners will probably bring up a graphic soon enough as Gilbeck trying to keep it to himself. Kenny Manigal will bounce it off his sneakers. Not a steal, just a team rebound, though Kenny Manigal is very good at that. A league leading. Let me look at that. 3.1 steals per game. I think the next highest is only about two and a half steals. Davis lining up a three, but it's short. In the plus league, we play 12-minute quarters. Aji to McCullough, but Manny Galt on the rotation. So Kenny putting one up and getting the answer up against Joseph Lynn. Quickly down the court, though. Christian Inigwe, good control. Laying in with the left. Anigwe started the last game for the Kings as a wild flip. Gilbeck will take the fall, but the referees say there was some contact there. Hopefully he's just bruised up a little bit. You know, kind of a wild flip, and uh, Kenny Manigal, I don't know if it was tripping underneath or contact with the hands. Certainly not a safe landing error for Gilbeck. Right, where was I? Christian Anigwe in the start against the Steelers. 16 points, 12 rebounds. Did miss five free throws, though. Something correct here. Aji from the painted air got his own board in the air. Too strong again. A couple missed opportunities for the fourth year guard out of Jinshi University. Was runner up in the collegiate finals this past weekend. He and a bunch of Jinshi alums were on hand to watch the games. He fired away from three. So far, it's a Kings 7-5 lead. There you see the scoreboard, a score bug on the bottom of the broadcast. Kenny Manigal will give it a shot. Nicola on a dribble pull up. That's off target. Now, because of Scheduling centers and a beautiful no look pass. A down by Manigal and Igwe getting the two points. A relatively quick start for the Kings. Aji kind of losing the dribble now, flipping it up as a new way bats it out. Joseph Lynn coming back for it and now. Kings with space. Yang Jimmy will give it another try. Trying to fight for the rebound. He was a former Dreamer way back in season one. Up against Randall Walco, switching to the right hand, but stopped. Strip from the side, trying to get the basketball back. He's got a lot of dribble again. Morris doing a tough one, overshooting, and it will be a shot clock violation. Good defense by Randy there. So we have our TV timeout under seven minutes, but we are eight seconds from that. And so Coach Proman calling to the bench as we get another look at some of the exploits by the Kings so far. Here's Julian Boyd. His second time around with the uh, Dreamers as he backflips it to Hayden Wu Chattering. Actually, opponents back in season two. Ujachin from the Pilots coming over later in a trade. 
Getting the score up close. Number 28, Lu Guan now. Out of the kind of surprising powerhouse of Taiwan Art University, Kaida. Davis, the end one up close. Shaking the defense to oblivion there as the horn sounds. That's our first stoppage here in the ball game. On a hashtag PLJ Tuesday Night Basketball, we are underway here from Xingzong. Welcome back to the broadcast. Like for some Tuesday night basketball here in the Plus League. Last season, we officially started scheduled weeknight games. As we are trying to build the business of basketball here in Taiwan. So far, it's been a 11 to 7 new Taipei Kings run out of the jump against the uh, Dreamers, who occupy the first spot of the team standings. If you all want to follow along with the uh, stats of the game, here, you ready to type this in? pleagueofficial.com slash game slash 500. That's right. According to our website, our 500th game, but of course, that mixes preseason and playoff games alike. Where we left off, Quincy Davis with the N1 free throw. Also, Dreamers are already going to their bench with a couple of subs. Kings, same lineup as Brandon Gilbeck makes the adjustment and with the left hand stuffs it in the cup. There's some dunking donuts. A little bit too physical as eventually the foul comes, but Joseph Lynn still with a extra word or two about that officiating. There you see Hayden trying to deliver and usually it's Aji who's throwing the lobs and Gilbeck like even had to stuff it off of a slight deflection. Looks like we have a flurry of a king substitutions. Now Jimmy will swish it from the left side. Already missed a couple threes from the right side as Pass needed a little bit more velocity, but Ryan Lupin now trying to put the boobs on. Got an eagle baseline, Elgin Baylor and Gilbeck. He'll do a little scoop put back. Never thought I'd say that, but here we are. Now Jimmy having made one, still facing Randall Walco. Now on the switch with shot clock running down. JJ putting it up and in. James uh, also a uh, Jianxing Technology University player. Averaging about 3.7 points per game. As the Dreamer is trying to get organized. Some funny spacing going on. Hayden. How about JB with a three? That's no. Under five minutes to go, Bayer Mullen setting the drag screen with Wu Guanyang trying to chase Yang Jiming and the reach foul. Bayer Mullen, the intended target. It's going to be on Boy coming down to help. On the King's bench, somewhere in there was Coach Ryan Marchand. 
And uh, James Mao, the general manager, also seated. Chris McCullough will come in as, looking up at the scoreboard, Boyd has two personal. Mullins lining up from the top, yes! Here's a three-point shooting I was speaking of. Kogi with the lane, flipping to Gilbeck, and a nice answer by the Dreamers. Just easy dribble penetration there. Joseph Lynn a little short, chasing his own board. Flipping it up, and he's got it. A little persistence will go a long way. King's already with uh, 21 points on the quarter as McCullough looking for that inside pass, but good rotation and good recovery. They left the shooter, Wu Jiaqing open, or I guess not as lethal a shooter as JJ or Jay Chen. Trying to get a look. Now right, we'll let McCullough put it up. I think that's the third team foul for the Kings. Here's Marshawn in the gray suit, getting a better look. His third season heading up the Kings program. The Manigal conducting the little huddle. Going by new teammates into the game and James Susushin. A really polite home crowd for McCullough's first free throw. So the uh, MC Holmesler trying to get a little bit of energy in here. McCullough played 40 minutes, 18 points, 13 rebounds against the Pilots, but 0 for 6 from deep. It's a new day here. Joseph Lynn, he's got an open look. Not quite. Ryan trying to find some space as Aji's back in there. Screen and roll with McCullough in the mid range, but choosing to get into some contact. No good with the left hand. Definitely had a jumper if he wanted to, but McCullough was trying to try something out, or at the highest level, you hear about guys trying to set other moves up as Sushi knocked over, and that'll be free throws coming up. It's going to be on uh, Chris McCullough, or likes to go by Brisk for the uh, named uh, beverage. And it's kind of funny, it looks like Gilbeck hit McCullough who hit Sushi. But in any case, free throws coming out. Sushi Shin taking a big step up this season with the time he can get on the floor. He's also been dealing with injuries. And congratulations for becoming a new father. He can average about 5.6 points per game. Only about 17 minutes played. Jay Chen way downtown. That's in. Jay Chen held out with some injury woes. He's Coach Kroman's backup shooting guard is an easy cross screen lead. Byron Mullins open. He throws it down. Looking up at the score for Byron Mullins. Now with five points to the game. Team leader is actually a Nigue with a seven as off ball there's a foul and not free throws yet, but Susu Shin was defending McCullough pretty solid in a previous matchup. Get another look at McCullough trying to claim that there was some jersey grabbing. Former King, Austin Day, joining the team and giving them a very solid contribution as one of two imports against the East Asia Super League competition. Jay Chen slicing and getting the lay-in. A quick five-point run for that man. He's also in his fourth year with the Dreamers. Out of Granville University in the stateside. 
Marlins feeling it. Hits it. is Swift on the McCullough. Skip pass over Manny Dalton's crouched arms and forced into a miss. About 100 seconds left as Mullins walks into one too easy. That's 10 points for him and giving the Kings a 10 point lead as a turnover and the uh, backcourt by the Dreamers uh, will result in a Susanshu and a little incidental foul there. Kind of just in the wrong spot there as McCullough went to jump for the rebound. Get another look at Gilbeck trying to help out a little bit too much. Hello will take his first free throw. No buddies around him. Four more or current. Uh, Susa Shin, his second personal. On the season, McCullough, 19 points per game. On this season, that's about, puts you about seventh place among the league leaders. Will that free throw? He now has six points and now seven on the affair. Thanks, Goldboard, for giving me a pretty quick update. About a minute left to go. Susan Shin, he's got it. From the outside, Susan Shin, as mentioned, is an improving three-point shooter at 39% so far in the season, trying to get around and blocked by Gilbeck. He leads the league in that category. Two straight seasons, trying to make it three. Who went out? How about from the right side? No good. And uh, two for one if they can get it. But Kenny Manigal content with uh, starting a move on Jay Chen. And almost had it. But the putback effort is JJ. Kind of making up for that missed uh, steal and score he had earlier. Not to worry, Kings with a commanding 35 to 22 lead. Nice pass by Aji as uh, Gilbeck took a hard hit. Right now holding his forehead. Definitely know that Kenny Manigo got him in the hands, but uh, to the facial layer is certainly something the Dreamers do not appreciate, and yes, need a slap to the face. So we're going to give Gilbeck plenty of time to recover on this. Now the Dreamers can contest if they think this should be an elevated foul. The referees will go to the monitor themselves. I do think that's the right decision by the officiating crew. A little bit of stoppage with certainly free throws coming up. We'll see if it's free throws and then 2.2 seconds for the Dreamers in the front court or the uh, Kings if they could get the rebound or take the ball out of the baseline from the made free throw. <laughs> This particular broadcast produced by our partners, formerly Momo Television, but now Bossu. Their crew is on hand to take a look at the play, see what's going on. And they will say just a common foul. So by the results, of course, I'm sure the Dreamers will make the argument a hit to the face is not pleasant, but the referees determined Manigault was going for the basketball. Now the Dreamers don't use a challenge, so in that case, not a double whammy, you could say. But 
Go back at the line, trying to improve on that free throw percentage. Actually, every year he's in the league. Hey, a little bit of a break. They'll be helping him out. Brandon Gilbeck, 156 attempts on the season. To his credit, he's also tried the three-point shot five times. Just a hit on that, a two-for-two two trip, so... Good effort by Gilbeck, has two seconds left. Mullen stopped by McCullough. Trying to claim a kick ball, but uh, I think from my perspective here on the baseline, it looked like Mullins might have kicked it. But in any case, the first quarter is in the books. Kings with the 11 point lead after one. Chin 歡迎我們黎明技術學院的朋友們也來到球場啊還有偷練習被發現來了現在是你表現的時候了一起戴上皇冠來了來了可以可以可以可以你們皇冠比較小頂哦來我們我們外國朋友Let's call a city Let's do a sample with our queen Nice You got this You got this 哦，这个感觉是帮小朋友抓头的。哎呦呦呦呦，可以可以可以，好可爱。Thanks to all of our 300,000 subscribers on the Plus League YouTube channel. Free shipping at the Plus League store with every $1,000 order till April 7th. Some of the highlights from the opening quarter here in Xinjiang were the. Number one Dreamers and number two Kings will battle it out. The Kings did open the season with seven straight victories to be in first place, but for the most part of the rest of the season, it's been the Dreamers show ever since week seven or so. So after the stoppage, it's Venti, Hongzhou-san, and Byron Mullen, Su Shen. JJ and Kenny Manigal, the sushi from the top of the arc. Some of his teammates going along with the pink theme. Very cool. That's Tony Mitchell in the sweater. And I think you might know the other guy. But if you don't, it's Jeremy Lin with a white baseball cap. Chris McCullough with the power. That's nine points for Brisk early in the game. A little driving kick. Fire Mullins will try to get one. Pretty good box out by Aji, but uh, oh no, it's Jay Chen, excuse me. Aji's the other guard in there. So those face up blockouts, which kind of need your teammates to jump in there to help grab that rebound. Otherwise, that offensive player. Basically, get a free foul. You try to get around them. Ming hey, Bong is in there. A little kick to Jake. Yay. A big arc there. They're trying to 
pick up where he left off as one of the strong inaugural team members. And he's been making his way now, a 27 three point percent shooter, but league average is about 31. A foul on Anigwe. You can tell the fouls by the white bars on the score bug. Looks like uh, the TV people need to put it the other way as it's McCullough again going to the cup. This time from the right side. The contact a couple times on the arm. So with this opportunity, uh, Boyd will come in for Gilbeck, but no movement on the Kings bench. Anigwe with now two personal fouls. But in and out for McCullough. High post action shooting at the Ling Jingfang to a corner shooter in Venti. He lets it fly by hitting the side of the backboard. Busan is one of the better three point shooters for the Kings at about 42%. McCullough trying to get his first. He drops it in. Sensing a little bit of a uh, Dreamers run. The uh, Kings calling for an early timeout here in the second quarter. Kala getting the start in the game, 11 points so far. That now leads the field as we head to this stoppage. We'll be back after this. New Plus League line of all black merchandise. Head to pleagueofficial.com slash shop slash black. That's B L A C K. If you need to know how to spell uh, P Lee, that's P L E A G U E. That's right. Our league name is Plus League, but uh, can't put that symbol in there for URLs willy nilly. Dreamers go on a little bit of a run, and it's time for the uh, Kings to answer back out of their timeout. Byron Mullins off to the left. The loose ball that looks like it will be up for the Dreamers, the referee right on top of it. Venti tried to throw it off Link Jingji, but perhaps the referee said Aji was already out of bounds. This is not a camera angle that will help too much. It looks like Aji stayed in bounds. So I guess the call would be Venti stepped out of bounds. Although, to be fair, we do not have a referee scorer's table side camera to help on that front. All the cameras on the side you guys are viewing things at. Boy, that one's close. Byron Mullins on the block. He's got a height advantage. Uses it and cans the jumper. Byron Mullins leading scorer for the Kings with 12. Aji, a little left-right crossover to a shooter. Ryan trying to find space. Spinning to a three seconds. Sun Miao Wei Li. 
Call's gonna go against Julian Boyd for loitering in the painted area. Number 21, Douglas Green. As Byron Mullins through the contact. We'll have to uh, earn it from the line. Got off a shot. Third personal against Julian Boyd as now he's seeing some frustration from the uh, Dreamer side. Good there on the far side of the court. The referees not paying them that much attention. Looks like Gilbeck, though, is ready to come into the game. Let's see if they can refocus after a missed free throw. Find that shot. That one was good. On the other side, Mullins contested shot, no good. As bounce of the basketball goes the King's way. Now JJ running through the middle to find some space. How about an alley to Byron Mullins? That one looked like it went in and out. Took a little bit of bad luck there as a big lob. Boyd patient with it. He drops it in softly. Mullins now on the uh, right block with a quick double team as Lee Ching Pong. And to JJ, he lets it fly. Too strong. One of the league leaders in rebounds is McCullough. He pushes it up. And a Walko didn't even realize he was in there, but only. Gets the iron. That team maneuvers right. There's a switch, and they had left Mullins open, and so Anigwe is open on the uh, rotation. But a little bit of bad luck for the Kings with that rim. They're getting good looks and a pretty decent result as. A whistle comes Randall Walko cutting through the lane. And Team Bomb initially. And now it looks like we have some extra characters going on. Certainly both teams. Not all that if please with the officiating in the last stretch. William Boyd ran over to this side to get away from the players and the referees on the other side while Mullins was free throw shooting. And now Mullins, though, not so lucky as, I don't know if he was intentionally rotated out, but as he was heading the other way, had an extra word. Bonchi will take this first one. That one's in. For all of uh, Byron Mullins, his family and friends on the other side of the broadcast, waving hi to you, waving hi to you, audience, viewing from wherever you are. Hey, sometimes people watch Plus League YouTube streams in the stadium. Isn't that a crazy idea? Walker making his first free throw of two. Too much with the uh, runner there. And now Dreamer's on the run. They're out of position as Walco, a good move to slice through the hole and lay it in. Now a timeout by the Kings as 
They've seen that big 11-point lead shrink to just three as it stands right now, 17 to nine on the quarter. like the uh, Kings will be uh, bringing in mostly their starters as the Dreamers have forced them to take both of their timeouts of the first half. There's Tony Mitchell who kind of recovered from a, a leg injury from a few weeks ago. Davis at the high post. Like the horn set with Joseph Lynn finally finding some space and Anji a little bit too physical. Is Anji's first personal. And on the switch, getting some room. Now across to Yang Jimmy and Randall Wako's face. That's definitely going to be a matchup that Coach Froman's going to be uh, happy to settle with. Randall Wako's got good length and it's pretty strong as Chris McCullough will tie up the ball game at 44 apiece. There's McCullough's night so far, 17 points. Already had a 40 piece in this building this season. Looks like ball went out of bounds off of a kick. Looks like we have starting lineup for the Dreamers as well as that one is short. Gilbeck had the Sneaker on the baseline or out of bounds as he went for it. Kings spread it way wide. And Angle put it to move on Kenny Chen to a big skip pass. Three seconds left. A whistle. Anji went to the deck, but there's a whistle call, and it will be on Ling Jun Ji. His second personal, that should lead to free throws. Oh, I'm a little ahead of myself. Four fouls on the Dreamers. Low enough on the shoot, shot clock, though, that not bonus, but shooting foul as. Joseph Lynn leaves it short. We're referring to universities. Joseph Lynn, a product of Hamilton College. Little double screen as Walco comes back for it. On the drive, finding room and getting the right-handed finger roll. Looking 
Dreamer is back up by one. With space, deflected pass right to Anigwe playing a bully ball there and getting two points his way. A bit of a different look, McCullough not giving the space. Now a high screen by Gilbeck is Anji. Skip the walk of going baseline and some trouble. It'll stay with the Dreamers. Good hands by Kenny Manigold. Quick handoff in the corner as it looked like Davis got in the way of that. He's trying to find some space as say a whistle on the hold. I believe a number three was indicated, so the only three out there is number 23 and Kenny Chen. More free throws coming up, but Falco will get a breather. So far his night, six points, no fouls, looking up at the big board. First. Way back in the day, we went to Fujian Catholic School. That's the university, actually just one MRT station away from here. a whistle, and I think it's Christian with a holding against McCullough. McCullough will step up to the line out of Syracuse University. Points that one. Well, the season, McCullough is a 70% free throw shooter. And 64 attempts coming into the night as change at guard for the Dreamers, Hayden's checking in. Kenny Manigal trying to get away from Kenny Chen. As Davis goes to screen, Kenny staying in front, Manigal kicking it, kicking it I should say, out of bounds. Uh, the golden black jerseys are not your team, not tonight at least. The other way, a double screen for JJ, then a kind of double post screen. That's Kenny Chen, he's left open, he'll give it a try. Gilbeck with the board, looking for an outlet as the Dreamers will have a fresh 14. Again, leaving Kenny Chen wide open as Jay Chen to Hayden from 30 feet out. Gave it a good effort as Gilbeck blows it from close range. Loose ball on the floor. McCullough eventually with it as he will make the adjustment and lay it in. Tied up at 49. Start a handoff. And he got going baseline. Uh, perfect. Kenny from mid range. And a 
foul. Trying to get into the body of Manny Galt there. They say a uh, foul getting into the cylinder. Get another look at Quincy Davis. Definitely got a piece of McCullough there. So Su Shen will check in for Anigwe. So Kenny Manigal right now with three personal. So does Anigwe. On the uh, Dreamer side, we detailed earlier it was Julian Boyd who got his third personal. So one of the OG members of the Dreamers, Kenny Chen. Gucci looking for Amigo, Yang Jingming. Quick double team showed as he gets a pull up off. Three dreamers in the neighborhood for a rebound, and they still have enough legs to get up for a little partial transition attack. Hayden, right, left, and right. Too short on the rebound as, uh, and excuse me, King on King out of bounds there. Quincy Davis trying to contend. There's some uh, illegal shoving going on there. Get another look. That's definitely not the case, at least. You're seeing what I'm seeing with Gilbeck kind of jumping sideways and backwards. That's another possession game for the Dreamers. Let's see what they make out of it. Moving up some of that inbound time. It's Gilbeck back to the basket. The double comes with Sushi getting the basketball. Let's see, I think it's. Foul on the Dreamers. Definitely not a common look for Gilbeck to start a post up from that far out. He's certainly been entrusted with a few more post touches, but not nearly that far away from the basket. And you kind of run into that danger of that help defender coming from a spot you're not used to. Can't convert that first one. What? The cool thing about Susa Shren's weekend is he got to saw his collegiate alma mater in the collegiate final four. Susa Shren out of Uwe Koda. Uwe Technical University, kind of in the central part of Taiwan. They made the uh, UBA final four. Achi getting deflected past the Gilbeck. Retreat it. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Ball thrown backcourt as Jay Chen will take that backcourt violation. Kings are doing a pretty decent job swarming Achi, forcing them to pick up a dribble. We're really not ready for it. Foul off ball, and Jimmy goes down. Jay Chen now switched onto him. Jay Chen's second personal. Yang Jiming on the season. Had to sit out for the first half of the season with a, a suspension due to some uh, extracurricular activities, just in a way. But still a productive score, 15.4 points per game. Per 36, that's nearly 20 points. Definitely enjoying a few extra free throws here thanks to some off-ball action. It's the Dreamers calling a timeout with 95 seconds left in the first half. 
So both teams did play last Saturday, as I mentioned. Let's kind of recap what was going on. There were some warning signs in that first half lead for the Dreamers. They turned the ball over only one time and shot 54% from the field. Those are good. But they were losing the rebounding and free throw margins. And in the second half, Jason Washburn for the Pilots led them on that historical comeback with 24 second half points, 37 in all for him. 89 for the Pilots, 85 for the Dreamers. It was a second straight for the uh, Dreamers. It was the second straight since they last got a win in Pauline a few weeks back. Meanwhile, on the Kings side, after returning from Cebu, where they had four alternating losses between the Lioneers and Pilots. Again, they played very well up against some of the best in the region. That includes Yuki Togashi, Shiba Jets, and the Anyang Zhong Gong Zhong Red Boosters. But from that experience, they came back to Taiwan where they got a win against the Braves, which we broadcasted here on the English Broadcast. And this past weekend, they went down to Kaohsiung and took down the Steelers to end a four-game road trip. Chris McCullough in the fourth season, now averaging 25.5 versus his former team after last year. 19.5, and that three-point percentage, a huge jump up to 40-plus percentage points. And, uh, well, this game's definitely doing that very good. Of course, for the Kings, the biggest news was Byron Mullins returning to their lineup for the last two and now three games. Unfortunately for the Kings, though, Jeremy Lin dealing with plantar fasciitis, undergoing some treatment that is not sanctioned by the governing body of sports and sports-related doping. So out for five games. League penalty, a big skip pass. Jay Chen got Manigal in there, then fired short as Manigal punches the rebound forward. Kings control. Time. Yang Jimmy to Manigal from the right corner. A little line drive short as Sushi going to the glass but missing. One of the close one is going to lead to Dreamers on the run. Akela tough. No, Kenny can't put it up. And they out of bounds off of the uh, Kings. There's a few opportunities, but if you can give the credit to the Kings getting back with enough intentionality to stop that break. Out to Jay Chan upside, over to Kenny. They were looking for Pella's way. A little angle on the baseline with power off the window and in. That time, good adjustment by Briss. Taking his man one on one. Davis getting the pass back after knocking a player down on the uh, screen and with time expiring, we're going to the locker rooms, or they're going to the locker rooms, 53-53. The broadcasters might take a little uh, trip to the restroom. We have a good one here, folks. For most of the Dreamers, the road team, the new Type A Kings at home here on a Tuesday night from Jing Chong. Now, 
那我们要怎么让他们选择队友呢？哦，直接，那就是你们面前的那一位。哦，前面前那一位就是你们队友，可以给你们一个机会，可以跟女王握个手了，好不好？握手握手，加油打气一下。好 ，OK OK， 那边的你的同学很兴奋的。好，我跟你们讲一下规则，很简单。我们呢总共有三个点，三个点，三个点，分别是我们的篮下，篮下，你看哦，篮下一个点，再来是我们的罚球线，没错，罚球线，再来就是我们最后的三分线。好，那我们呢三个点呢？啊，好，女王，女王，冷静，冷静。好，我们总共三个点，三个点，每一个人好不好？例如说，迪迪，你在篮下投进了，那我们的第二位女王呢，就要在罚球线再投。第三位也是迪迪，赶快跑到三分线，投出三分球，好不好？都一定要投到进为止哦，一定要进哦。三分球可以轮流，男生女生都可以一起。好，我们直接好不好？第一组示范一次给后面的组别就知道了。来，那我们杨洋，杨洋先上吧。那我们女生呢？啊，我们另外一组对不对？那 Amber 要在对面，不好意思。另外一边，另外一边，快点，快去，去。啊，那小绿呢？啊，那就小绿，小绿，莫名其妙。好，你的对手突然变得痒痒了。好，请到我们的南下以及。好，那我们要跟各位讲哦，两组只有一组会晋级哦。好，只有一组会晋级。那获胜的可以获得 Segway、Night Bus、罗宋旁电动滑板车。好，总共九十秒的时间，九十秒。同时啊，篮下先，对，越来越远，越来越远。好，来准备哦，计时开始。哦，养羊跟小绿同时在篮下进球。我们的球迷朋友，来罚球线，两边都没进。第二球，可惜两边还是没有进。谁会先进进？获得我们女王的。It's halftime here between the Dreamers and Kings from Xingzhong Gymnasium. Looking ahead to the Plus League schedule, the Dreamers will host the Steelers at Inner Continental Basketball Stadium in Taizong at 7 p.m. We are looking ahead to the future Plus League action on the Mandarin broadcast. Aaron Yang Zhenlei and Mark Tianhui on the Mandarin commentary. That is not me, as two different people speaking with the same voice, but talking to themselves on the broadcast. I'm Ryan Chen, your English commentator, as taking a look at some of the highlights from the first half of action so far. If the uh, Kings get the victory, they will tie the Dreamers in the win and loss column, but the Dreamers will still own the head-to-head -head advantage, having won three out of the first four games they matched up with each other. And there's really four very distinct storylines in the game so far that they had against each other. You've had the Chris McCullough 40 bomb here in Xingzhong against his former team at his own stomping ground. Then January 6th, the Dreamers won with both teams low shooting percentage from outside but dreamers dominate the pain and that's kind of the thing they've of this game as well then of course if you're just joining the action and maybe have not kept it with plus league news jeremy 43 points 22 which is a plus league record in the second quarter of the third time they matched up back on january 20th kings only win and a head-to-head -head this season but unfortunately between his plantar fasciitis and the illegal treatment he received out for a few more weeks. Then, the last time they matched up, King returned from Korea, having that loss and having to travel down to Taizong, or Zhanghua, in fact. And uh, Randall Walko's 22 off the bench was leading the effort to the Dreamers' victory then. There's the combined team stats for this game. We got points, field goals, three-point shooting, rebounds, which the Dreamers have an advantage in, and assists, and at the bottom, turnovers. Now. The Dreamers have 10 turnovers, four of them belonging to Achi, leading to their starting point guard, who's really been talked about as a front runner for MVP on the uh, season. He does have seven assists, but they've really trapped him in good spots. 
But more breakdown after we come back from the next break. You're watching The Plus League on YouTube. Fans in the building having a little bit of fun. I don't know if they realize they're on camera. Cameraman, that's that's not the point. I want to see the enthusiastic fans, not the people who are falling asleep. Come on, cameraman. Well, back to the basketball we go as Chris McCullough leading the Dreamers with 22 points. Brandon Gilbeck falling up with eight. Randa Walker with six. Julian Boyd with five. And Jay Chen with five straight points in there in the first half. The uh, Dreamers definitely want defensively want to stick Randall Walko and Yang Jimmy, and that's had a pretty good effect. And Jay Chen's had his turn. On the King side, Byron Mullins leads them with 13 points and Igwe 9. James Susan Shin 9. And Joseph Lin with 7. And the solid bench scoring between Sushi and Mullins has been good because the starters 8 for 15 from 2, but only 1 for 10 from 3. There's been solid enough three-point shooting from both teams. But you know the Dreamers will want to bring it inside a little bit more than their opponents. And that's caused a little bit of foul trouble. We'll be back after this with the start of the second half.
We are just moments away from the start of the second half of action. Looking at the uh, Plus League calendar, this is game 78 of our 120 game regular season odyssey. As I mentioned in the opening in Taiwan, March is also the time for student basketball. And so this past weekend, the Zenzi University squad took their fourth straight title on the men's side, and Sushin University won their fifth straight. And at the high school, Nansan boys were able to take their first title, and I think it was Bayi who were able to take the women's title. Chris McCullough getting the highlight package, already 22 points, nine rebounds, two assists, just one first half of action. The Kings certainly wanted to try Susan Shrin to guard him, but as you can see from that last action, these scores are gonna figure out their way to score as looks like we have a little bit of a cricket basket situation going on. Tony Mitchell providing a little bit of assistance, I think. On the other side, Byron Mullins is getting the highlight package. Coming off the bench, 13 points on five of nine shooting. As I mentioned, a couple of early threes. Really got the Kings off to that early first quarter lead. And the uh, Dreamers had to fight back. It was a uh, 35 to 24 for the Kings in the first quarter, then 29-18 for the Dreamers in the second as Tony Mitchell's giving another effort. I don't know if he should be hanging up there with the leg injury he sustained before. But I'm sure the uh, scorer's table, who's assisting the referees with equipment like the baskets, we've seen that before. I didn't realize uh, getting assists from a... Uh, Where is uh, my notes on uh, Tony Mitchell? I didn't realize getting assists from a 6'8 uh, power forward was really in the makings of this game, but you never know. I think after a slight delay with the equipment, we were just about ready to go. The Kings have been a little bit better. Actually, you could say much better if you only see three turnovers on the stat line. Of course, head coaches like to see that number to be zero. All right, no jibber-jabber. It's time for basketball as initial cross screen for Gilbeck turns him into a pin down for Walco. Now Kenny driving, but overshot it as Gilbeck with a two-handed jam. Some sweet stuff to start off the second half for the Dreamers. There's the Mandarin names of the uh, broadcasters. Ken Hong Kui and Yang Zhenlei from left to right. Joseph Lin kicking out to Davis. Can't get the answer at three as they'll say Dreamers basketball. And Igwe was the closest king to that action. You see Kenny kind of overrunning the basket, but attracting Davis's help and Gilbeck throwing it down. A little bit of full court pressure by the Kings there. So far in the game, they've played 10 players. Of course, very minutes. McCullough's got a catch and shoot. Rebound to Kenny. Aji, as there's a illegal screen somewhere in there, and they say it's on Kenny Chen, though took a spill on the hardwood. I need to take another look at that one. On the uh, Dreamer side, they've also played 10 players. Get another look. That's him backing into Joseph Lin. Certainly incidental, but kind of funny contact for sure. First team foul, first foul of the half. Kenny Chen's second personal to keep you abreast of all those numbers. As referees say, you are in charge of your own body. And 
a similar fashion, you could say defenders have the right to play defense as well. Manigault lines it up. Certainly a good advantage of being seven feet with a very long wingspan as Aachi throws a straight past Kenny. Looks like Kenny was ready to go to the basket and Aachi was trying to throw it to a corner shooter. Back to Joe, using a Davis screen. Sideways running runner, wow. Hey, they think Joseph Lynn had that kind of angle and an easy offensive illegal screen by Gilbeck there, delivering the blow to Anigwe, who's still down on the hardwood trying to recover. Look at the video replay of this, and uh, yeah, Gilbeck's leaning forward there. hold your ground and screen or set the pick but when you deliver a blow like that it's not really good for the defender well, I, that's where I would always argue that maybe offensive players should call out the screen sometimes help out the defense avoid contact like that back door to Yang Timi good adjustment as Malco was top covering him or trying to deny the pass from the high side or not the back side to the basket. And wide open, a big ricochet to a king. Through contact, no good as Dreamers can't hang on. Trying to jump back on Gilbeck, but too much defensive coverage there. Yang Ting Mi from 30 feet out. Be a long rebound. Team rebound, that is. Yang Ting Mi has not had a very solid shooting game yet. Only a one for seven so far. McCullough from the free throw area. Over to Walco. He's got an open look, but that one's halfway down and out. A little bit of subdued scoring so far in the uh, third quarter. And now given space, stuffed by Gilbeck. Played about three minutes here in the second half. A kick out. Christian from the left corner, way short. Like everything's a little bit tight, but typically in the third quarter, as Kenny Chen given a lane and throwing a layup. There was a Gilbeck dunk, but it was so anticlimactic. Crowd didn't react at all. Neither did this broadcaster. Oh, easy two points to get the scoring started. Joe, count it. Leaning in on the defense. Illegal contact. Quincy Davis and Kenny Manigault kind of duped me into quitting on the play broadcast wise then kind of leaning through there looking up and it looks like Brandon Gilbeck just recorded his fourth personal Up by three now as Julian Boyd in good position. Achi though dropping in a beauty. Very quiet four points for Lee Jing Ji. Anyway, from the free throw area, that's kind of his range, but choosing to run some offense, Joe. 
Do one contact, rising up and swishing it. Good patience there as Manny Gall jumps the pass. Beautiful steal there as faking up, flipping it up for a miss. Not easy going up against Boyd and McCullough down low. Quick handoff play as Anji skips it to Lupa down. Left corner, wide open, knocks it down. Quick answer by the Dreamers to get back up by one. bit of trouble as Aji turns up the pressure. Now a three second call. Davis was hanging in the lane for what felt like a vacation. He'll come out with Kenny Manigold as Mullins and JJ will check in. on the catch, but looking for Anji. Trying to get around Joe, maneuvering right. Running into a defender and scoring the jumper. That also looks like one of those uh, excuse me fouls by uh, JJ. Dreamers now up on the ball game, uh, 65 to 62 as we head to the first TV timeout here in the half. Aji, Ling Jun Ji, a little confusing, but the left column or center column is his stats when the team, when he has a plus in the plus minus column, 14 wins, one loss, but in the games where he has a minus, two wins, eight losses. So, so pretty dramatic splits for Ling Jun Ji, a good indicator of the team's success. In the Saturday's game, only scored five points, but did get three rebounds and eight assists in 32 minutes. Now. His low on the season, interesting enough, was December 22nd at home versus the Steelers. Yeah, two points in that player. The free throw made two. That pushes the lead up to four as the uh, Kings try to get it set up on offense. No personal changes. Byron Mullins and number 10, JJ, the freshest bodies in. Jimmy now trying to back down Ryan with a step back. Bounce to Anigwe and Joseph Lynch, 31 feet, two pounds, three bounces out. Anigwe with an easy put back. Boyd going to the baseline through the contact. Well, after earning from the free throw line, assuming Yang Jimmy is thinking that he got ball with that. The so boy will step up the line. Five points, one rebound, but of course, dealing with the uh, three personals in the first half. Let's see if he can. 
extend those minutes, make some more contributions. We fouled out of the Pilots game on Saturday. After scoring 22 points and grabbing 12 rebounds. Change in the uh, backcourt as Hayden will take Auntie's place. Joseph and Mullins working on the uh, ball screen. Moving right. Skipping the pass to Mnugay. Flipping to Mullins. There's a whistle. Will they count it? They say it's on the floor. Take another look at that one. Definitely can credit the uh, Kings for better offense versus the defense. There you see the arm holding already engaged. Now oh, Joseph Lynn getting Hayden to foul on the uh, underneath swing move. Got your second personal. This university actually not too far. NTSU National Taiwan University of Sport. Not to be confused with Taiwan University of Sport down in Taichung. Joseph Lin's evening, 13 points. Dropping in a couple of free throws. Had 14 assists in the last game against the Steelers. And as mentioned, already set the league record with 19 assists in the uh, previous game against the Braves. Getting in the passing lane there. One man to beat. Taking it off grass and in. Aiden Kujatrick landing up on the hardwood. We have a little stoppage to check if Hayden bid himself and caused a cut. Get another look at Joseph Lynn running down court and with great body control. Don't think any love lost on that play. After the boy screen, Hayden off glass and out. To go ahead for the Kings. Now Jimmy directing traffic. Elbow extended, bouncing out, fight for the rebound. Get touched out. Referee needs a little help. They say it's for the Dreamers. A crazy scramble, as you see. Hard to tell from that close to the action. There are a few more Dreamers body in the neighborhood. Now spread out wide. They test the free throw area. That's no good. You're following on with the stats just like I am. You're seeing Igwe coming through a foul. A hard one by Hayden. I didn't even realize he could reach up that high. Christian Igwe, hopefully he didn't hurt his head against the hardwood. Right now, Kings 6 for 17 from the field in the third. The Dreamers on their side, five turnovers. It's getting a look. Holding on to the wrist. Certainly not a very safe play in the end. Finally, Nigo is on his feet, but still taking inventory. There you see, if you saw on screen, Hayden's third personal. Now stepping up to the line. Good rotation, but a little off target. Anyway on the game, 11, and still going to be at 11 points. Oh, 
block, but there's a whistle a tripping somewhere in there. It's going to be on JJ. You have a premier defender and had that a kind of incidental foul <laughs> against Aji and now trying to keep up. Definitely hacked Blanco from over the shoulder. I, think, I don't think that's what the referee called. He indicated some kind of tripping. Like that free throw was squeezed in. Bring back up by one as Walker. Eight points on the evening. Out of the College of New Jersey. Whistle on the outside. And immediately Joseph Lynn, knowing that the Kings are in the bonus. Joseph Lynn got a 69% free throw shooter on the season. Averaging 13.1 points per game. Anyway, putting it on target, but a little bit off. Good fight there for the rebound. Over to Boyd, he's got a great Strong, going after his own horse, swinging it around, dropping it off for Kenny, and there's a foul into the hoop. Probably should have had it. Kings need to get a little bit more focused in on getting possession. You can see that kind of frustration on uh, Joseph Lynn's reaction there. Pretty good contest against Boyd, but he was off to the pass. Kenny rolls it in. It has been a rather quiet crowd for the most part on these free throws. If my notes are correct, Kenny Chen has only taken 25 free throws so far on the season. Has only made nine of them coming into tonight. as the Kings are in a better spot. And they'll get the rebound off the baseline. Found the baseline. McCullough trying to keep pace with Yang Ming. You look at Yang Jiming communicate with Mullins for these free throws. As mentioned, pretty much every team in the plus league will not rotate that many players or as frequently in the third quarter as any other quarter. That one's bounced out. So far in this frame. Seven Kings and on the Dreamer side, a little bit more expansive. Nine players, though Hayden only playing for about two minutes, and now on the bench, back again. A little shoelace stoppage as McCullough switches free throw lanes. Legal in basketball, you can run the lane, so to speak, run the baseline on a made shot. Off the screen as Boyd gets an advantageous position. Reverse layup, left a little short, got his own board. Maybe thinks a little help. One effort no, two efforts no, and a whistle comes. Again, the Kings can't secure the board. Byron Mullen, uh, because he was switched out, was actually on the perimeter. It will be Anigwe's fourth personal. So the putbacks were not easy, but Boyd swishing the first free throw. Can't even really 
say the Kings are right now small. There's a whistle and uh, looks like Boyd crossed the free throw line too early. Yeah, you could kind of say they're going a little smaller. Nigue listed at 206 or 69. Along with uh, Byron Mullins, who's listed at 213 or about seven feet tall. Flipping it up a little bit too hard as Mullins stepped out of bounds trying to save it. Andy Gall will come in for Yamtv and Aji will come in for Ryan. All right, the ball player. Get past to Walco, slipping through, flipping it up. Stopped by the Kings as Manny Gall trying to look for some help. Putting the moves on. Kicked to JJ, kicked to Byron Mullen. He'll let it fly. That's off. Omar, third quarter, combined a 30 and 7 points as Boy takes the deep one. That is way below the uh, scoring of all the other players. Manny Golf off the mark. Shooting-wise, the Dreamers 5 for 16, and the Kings 6 for 20 as McCullough. So good, and Boyd somehow stuffing it through. Wow, in amongst the trees of the Kings rebounders. There's a highlight play for our social media. Manigal flipping it up and under, but not quite get all the way through as Kenny brings it up court. Through the deep ends, a, a nice reverse on his end. So in the end, a good trade off for the Dreamers. Score, stop, and score. It fell as Kenny tried to go underneath Byron Mullins for the steal. More free throws coming up as the Kings try to stop this run by the Dreamers. Get another look at Boy got a one-two step, elevated, and uh, threw it down. An exclamation point on what has so far been a 10-point effort on the game. Byron Mullen trying to shake something off his right elbow or right arm. Second on the team with 13 points as Joseph Lynn jumping ahead with now 17. Zap A with that. Manny Gall trying to go through toughness. Spacing for the Dreamers and McCullough almost lost the dribble. Turner it to Anji. Four on five, no matter. Lee Trinky. Cash money with that one. Stretching out to a 10-4 Dreamers lead. Time running down. Venti will try to answer. And what a good counter. Waking up the crowd here from King John Gymnasia. Let's see who really has the momentum heading into the fourth and final frame of this one. Dreamers. Jump out on top, 82 to 75.
谢康佳棉。我想我知道他听得懂中文，所以可以这样讲哦。哈哈哈 Hello， 美女们，来跟我们的 Chris 一起为健康加棉，把我们的王冠戴在头上，一起庆祝我们的女王月。Let's go。Hello， 哇，是来自我们香港的朋友啊，欢迎来到我们新春城堡，来一起为我们庆祝，加油，应援 ！Let's go，Let's 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 go。Hello， 跟着我们的 Chris 一起为健康那边，我们可以挥手吗 ？Hello。你好，带着我们的王冠的这一位美女，我们请跟 Chris 为健康加冕。Hello， 我们的女王们，今天在我们大荧幕上面的都是我们女王乐的主角，我们的女王们都来到我们的现场了。诸位，你是我的偶像，你也是我前进的动力。Hello， 女王们，跟我们的大荧幕挥挥手好吗 ？Let's go，Let's go。Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hello, 跟我们的大荧幕挥挥手，你好。来来，继续，继续，我们是美国加油队员，我们是美国加油队员。那些球迷朋友，我们 All My Basketball 是我本人在 IB 班学员吧，教你的篮球的英文术语。欢迎大家点资讯栏的链接一起学习。So the broadcast playing a little uh one of my favorite childhood books, but changing the characters up. Where is Byron Mullins trying to run ahead, perhaps on these fast breaks? But you need to have the rebound. Looking back on the third quarter, the Dreamers had. 19 rebounds to the uh, Kings 13. Dropping it up. Sushi able to get the score. Venti, after hitting that three, immediately gets the assist. Good way to get jump back in. And as I said, definitely a uh, question of momentum as Brandon Gilbeck taking a hard fall. And the whistle eventually comes, but I don't think it's for it. I don't know if he was hit necessarily with that part, but you hit the wrong spot, the wrong part of the sternum, it'll hurt. There you see Venti throwing his arms. That's definitely a little bit too much action. The referees will take a look at it. Now, the Kings are offering a protest of this replay, but Considering their player is the one that initiated this foul, I'm not rich ground to stand on. Of course, coaching staffs will always say we're protesting other fouls. That was definitely Venti using all arms and zero body there. Seemed like more of a fencing move than anything, and clearly the referees had a play on first, which is not really a uh, good look of officiating. No, for a player's safety sake, it does not seem like the referees will be addressing this with a additional foul call. It's just Achi going to the line. For the king's sake, they can probably have to say that we already fouled Achi, so we got two free throws coming up anyways, but everybody will think however they're gonna think. Setting a screen for Venti, maneuvering right, skipping it to Manigal. 
Trying to work with Mullen to get to the mid range. So close, but no. And for the Dreamers to attack in space. Looks like we're going to have a holding foul. Venti trying to maneuver around that Gilbeck screen. This time it was Aji providing a little bit more help with the crossovers. Boyd with momentum, stopping. Still 12 seconds on the shot clock is Gilbeck flying around. Byron Mullins, enough of a contest. Aji firing it away and uh, Again, a few more rebounds for the Dreamers. Also, thought, give it a second thought as he wants his point guard to shake, they get past, but stripped. We'll have to recover as the Kings push it up ahead. As JJ with a near miss. Contacts, but no call as the Dreamers settle down. Crossing over left, pulling it back, no. Manny Gold into the painted area on Walco. Look at the end one, a tough play. Not much Rando could do in there, pushed into the painted area. There's a little bit of contact on the wrist indeed. Not easy to just stay vertical there. If you need a reminder, these two teams do play very often in the next few weeks, so they might only get hotter and hotter in these contests. shooting on the game so far. Advantage to the uh, Dreamers if you just look at that as uh, JJ will get the lucky bounce. Making the shot to the pass, but it doesn't look like Mullins is ready for it. Skip pass to Boyd, he'll get the shot. And short as a couple of kicks collide, but can't get the rebound. There you see the rebounding difference on the game. 52 for the Dreamers, 33 for the Kings, and 19 to 12 offensive rebounds according to our broadcast. Out to J10 from 30 feet. Again, a little bit short, with a little bit more legs. And illegal screen, Venti pushing Hachi all the way down the court. Can't really uh, American football block like that. I don't think Coach Marchand minds that much that Venti has three personal. Three team fouls as McCullough goes for a tough baseline jumper. After the air ball, Manny Ball fouled in transition. Both teams trying to get a little bit more flow going. No timeouts yet. Chen's in there. 
Trying to mark Manigault, shifting over for some help as Joseph gets his defender into a screen. Now dishes off and a double team in some trouble into a turnover, but dangerous passing. Gilbeck kind of threw it without having awareness of the court. balancing as Kenny McCullough on the side. There's a slip and on the dribble can't hit. Looking at a mismatch. Now Timmy with his back to the basket help nearby. Poking the pass. Look what I found Christian and Nigue with a reverse. That is our first kick field goal in a little bit. They only find themselves down by four, though. Hello with Joseph Lynn guarding him. Now back into the post. Spinning baseline trapped and throwing it out of bounds. Trying to hit a shooter that wasn't there. Been a couple minutes since the uh, Dreamers have scored as Coach Jamie Perlman will elect to call a timeout here. We'll be back after the following messages. Keep it clean out there, boys. Young Jimmy's shooting and scoring numbers from season to season. So far tonight, eight points on it. Two of ten shooting, so in that respect, the uh, Dreamers' defensive effort has been working in this particular matchup. And as I highlighted at halftime, primarily it's going to be Randall Walco guarding him if they can keep him out there. A two-time MVP of the Plus League. His first action back in this season was in the East Asia Super League while he's not suspended there. So far, this fourth quarter has been 7-4 to four for the Kings. We are approaching five minutes played. On the switch, Aji's guarding the middle where Young Jimmy posting up. But Kenny Manigal raising the iron there. That's wide open. Now continue to be the look as J10 fakes left, goes right, high off the window and in. J10 uh, getting up to nine points and pushing the uh, Dreamers lead. Not to be out there, Joseph Lynn was probing the middle. Over the trouble, Anigwe had the mismatch, but Manigal will fire away and that one's good. Some momentum off of a dribble pull of Kenny Manigault's eight points on three of 15 shooting. His first made three pointer. Manigault swipes down, fouling Kenny Chen. Rico's coming up. Kings have 14 fouls, Dreamers two. 
Yeah, look, it was clean initially, but that down swipe caught the referee's attention. So far on the game, Kenny Chen with nine points, five rebounds. Two of six shooting from the floor, and really high RP. Perfect six for six from the free throw line. Joseph Lindo getting the lane. No, as Kenny falling with that rebound, scramble for it. Aji wins it. Maybe Kenny Chen doing the up downs during the offseason. He bounces back, back up, helps his teammate out. Approaching six minutes left in the ball game. Makolo looking for that Joseph Lin matchup, flying through, ball gets away. And a scramble, Joe Ryan fade away, almost. Picky now, already hitting one, another one, Kenny Manigal. Bringing the Kings within two. Way offline as Aji then charges in, crashes into a foul. Just like that, momentum in the direction of the uh, Kings. There you see the extra twisty and turning by Davis and uh, Gilbeck. Whenever Quincy Davis is in there, you know it'll be a little bit of an arm wrestle as a little unlucky for Aji, but that's going to go the def the offense in the way more often than not. Another look at Aji just being a proud of half a step short or a half a beat late. Let's go. Let's go, Trying to play sticky defense on Joseph Lin, but they are the switch. There's a slightly bigger Luka Nemron in the play. Now screen for Manigal. Double team comes. Can't handle the pass as it goes out of bounds and for the Dreamers. It's all part of the game as a screener in modern basketball. You got to be able to take care of that catch. Defenses are going to put a lot of attention on that very strong score. And Aji even fighting through for an offensive putback opportunity. Out of win there. Casey getting the better out of Joseph Lin there with some good tempo. And been exactly Joseph Knight when it comes to the rebounding side. He's kind of been unfortunately stuck underneath the hoop a couple times. It's only a second personal, which is how he got the first foul. There's Aji's halves, one point in the first half. In Manu, we have sunk for upper half, and then 13 points in the uh, half lower half, second half. That's how we differentiate. Athens here in Taiwan and Mandarin. Make the adjustment, he does. Firing away, Boyd is going high for the rebound. Still with a lead, but the Dreamers want to get the momentum back on their side. Double ball screen, 
boy with the momentum, flying in the air and getting the scoop layup. A good set play by the Dreamers will force the uh, Kings to call a timeout. Their first team timeout of the second half. They're just taking advantage of catching Byron Mullins, trying to guard two at the same time. much for this broadcaster claiming it was a decent three-point shooting performance. Right now the Dreamers 0 for 6 in the fourth quarter after going 3 of 9 in the uh, third quarter. Meanwhile on the kick side, thanks to Kenny Manigal knocking down a couple. Two for four in the fourth, only one for nine in the third. Kind of a little bit of a seesaw going on here. Out of the timeout. Same five that went in and uh, same five for the Dreamers. We're talking about foul issues while well, looking up and down for the King side. Anigwe with four, Manigal with four personal. On the Dreamer side, Aki with four, Kenny with four, Gilbeck and Boy with four pieces. Gets the slam on the cross screen. You can say credit to Coach Marchand and the coaching staff. In volleyball, they say point to the timeout. Boy spins around, shoots it as Ricochet rebound to Manny Ball. How about a third? Yes, sir! Kenny Manigal. We are tied up at 93. Oh, he's been clutch. They swarm JB as Lupin now calls for travel. Chance to go ahead as Coach Marchand and Joe try to get a play call in, get another look. It's not matched up in transition, and the Dreamers pay for it. The player goes down as Joseph Lynn way overshoots the shot. I think he'll stay over here, but uh, kind of a freaky situation there with Young GB going to the hardwood. He's all right. Popping it out to Sushi, down screen for Joe. Logan in the mid range there, got it. Back up on top, new type A king with three minutes to play. McCullough trying to play tough as a whistle comes. It'll go the other way. And with that, I believe it's free throws coming up. Julian Boyd, that means five for him. Can't stay in the game, but we are close to foul out territory. Taking the first, Byron Mullins now looking at a night of 18 points. A little ways away from counting possessions. And now it's a two possession lead for the Kings. Second and putting it up. It's a 
Nico keeping it in bounds. Too employed in the neighborhood, almost with a uh, sixth foul there. We're trying to get a stop and get some that defense and offense energy. Manigal putting it up, in and out. Mercifully for the Dreamers as they push it up ahead. J10 trying to beat one, got it. Taking a hard tumble, but he's all right as Byron Mullins up ahead. He's fouled on the low. Randall Walco, the last man back. Not a good back and forth if you're the Dreamers. Time is just ticking, ticking, ticking down. Get a beautiful feed by Kenny Manigal. Three quarters of the court. Like Byron Mullins was tripping over the free throw line. Trying to get on the same page. Mullins short but in. Now perhaps you can start counting possessions. Substitutions available. Clock stops and after. Under two minutes, Boyd going through, he slams it. There's an emphatic way to get back into the game. Hold on to your seats. JB jumping the pass, but Mullins with advantage. Swallowed up by McCullough. Big Sushi in the midst. Getting the ball back as Yankee launches, no. Scramble for the ball of Big Sushi again. Good effort, but wasn't meant to be. Here they come. Chris McCullough, three. Oh, man. Hammering it home. Getting back up. They're going to get back on defense. Dreamers back up by one. One and a half minutes to go. The whistle has kind of stick with it, but. Julian Boyd looks like he'll pay for it with his sixth foul. Getting another look at Achi to Chris McCullough delivering the goods. Even with Susan Shren trying to match up back end. There's Boyd's line, 14 points, 11 rebounds. Byron Mullins, one for two the last time he was at the line. On the season, a 71% free throw shooter coming into tonight. That one was Chris. So a 0-0 ball game, strictly speaking. Mullins, so far, 12 games played on the season, held out for a Couple months with that planter fast shot is only one for two again. Aji to Walco. They're gonna run some more offense. McCullough makes the handoff. Now back to Aji at the top. McCullough. backing down the jumper. Yes! Stroking it from 15 feet. McCullough putting the Dreamers up by three. 26 points on his night. Looking down the floor, King's trying to set something up. A through pass as Young Jimmy takes the contact. Can't finish through that one. As the Kings commit a foul in transition, Aji looks like the one Ready to step up the free throws as get another look. So Young Jimmy had a fight through a, a whole wall of defenders. Crunch time for the Kings. Have their timeouts and have a little bit of time left. Good point on. Staying composed. A quiet word to the team as Young Jimmy steps up the line. 
Whitaker way over Steven that first. Boy, do we have drama. A fresh 24 waiting whoever gets the possession next. If it's the two creamers, though, it's 14. Only one man on the block. It's Gilbert. It's the crowd out JB. It's one free throw in. So four point lead for the Dreamers as the buzzer goes, but not a timeout. Just substitution. Defense for offense on the Dreamer side. Joseph Lynn will get it started. He's way open. Down low to Collins. Easy two points to get things started. And with that much time left, the Dreamers can't ice the clock, can't burn it out as McCullough still with Sushi trying to hound him. Walko trying to join the fray, but it doesn't help. The former King going left, losing the handle, flipping a wild shot. No, Marzo with the board. 10 seconds to go. Marshawn going to let him play. As Manny Gall with McCullough in front. Ball goes out of bounds, still time left, but it's Dreamers basketball. Trying to fight through a wall of Dreamers defenders. Ball for the boys in white. Now the Kings are trying to get the ref's attention and challenge the out of bounds play. It sure is close, but in any case, 0.6. I don't imagine they can add more than a second left back on the clock. If the Dreamers, or if the Kings, excuse me, need to get a stop and get the ball back, but look, the screen doesn't get anywhere, and Byron Mullins doesn't pull Gilbeck out of the play as definitely see Manigal reaching through the two arms as Gilbeck swung his right hand. I don't think he made contact, but I'm sure the referees are gonna try to get as sure of a look as they can on it. Everybody working hard, including the broadcasters, right now trying to give the two officials the best look. It was Kenny Manigal trying to take on McCullough and then Gilbeck. Certainly a lot of contact, but Kind of already heard it in the plus league. They like to see the players determine the game. So up to this point, it seems to be mostly Dreamers touching it. Now you see Kenny's right arm push it through. See up to this point, still Kings, still Kings on the ball, Kings on the ball. And by now, it's Gilbeck's hand on it. Gilbeck's hand, Gilbeck's hand. Now it's loose. I still think at this point, Dreamer's last touch it, but there you see Kenny Manigal just guiding the basketball out toward the baseline right in front of us. Definitely the funny thing to me is the third official out on the floor just looking at the score table, trying to keep composed, just like the two teams. No more instructions from the coaches. Perhaps they're just double checking to make sure Randy Gilbeck didn't touch it out of bounds. Try from the number one camera. See, it's Gilbeck here, but I think Kenny Manigold is the one reaching at the end. And and I think the score table did a decent job with how much time is left on the clock. They don't have to add much at all. If at all. The announced crowd tonight, 3,532 on hand to witness. Number one versus number two here in the Plus League. This replay though is... They didn't take a look at it four times. They certainly looked at it three times. They're going to go to the scores table first. Oh, to the MCs. Make sure they deliver the message clearly. Going to 
go across the scores table and make sure it's on the same page. Keep it show. It will be Dreamers basketball. And uh, based on the officiating signal, it's the Dreamers who are going to call a timeout. Only 0.1, one tenth of a second added to the clock. That'll make it uh, a fraction easier. As Coach Perlman is instructing the boys. Want to throw the ball pretty much all the way down court. Meanwhile, if you're Coach Marshawn, you almost want the Dreamers to inbound it close to their own basket if they can help it. So I'd imagine, if I were to guess, Brandon Gilbeck is going to be on the basket. The five kings on the floor. Igwe, Manigal, Joseph Lin, Su Shin, and Ling Jingbang. Gilbeck. Close to the basket. As long as they touch his inbounds, the clock will run and there is a whistle, but the buzzer went off. So Gilbeck tried to brush it out of bounds. A take foul would be interesting because if they do foul, the Dreamers can take a technical free throw and inbound again. If they determine that it was a illegal pre-inbound foul, if it's just a common foul, there's two free throws coming up. So in any case, the Dreamers are winning. If it's just out of bounds off of the Dreamers, that would be awkward. As it'll leave 0.5 seconds for the Kings to keep up a miracle. Brandon Gilbeck to the free throw line. Certainly, two free throws would at least guarantee a tie, funny enough, but. Maybe intentionally missing the second might start the clock. It is 0.5, so eligible for a catch and shoot, but it would have to be pretty much full court. Badly missing with that first one. Some entry, but not a lot left. Banking it in. 0.5, and now the Kings can call timeout and advance the basketball. Well, there's a turn of events. So now Coach Perlman and the Dreamers will have to very seriously defend this possession as the Kings, with the timeout, can advance the basketball too. Well, there you can see Brandon Gilbeck on the free throw. Definitely want to hit it off the rim hard but off the bank you need to hit it a little harder than that all Julian Boyd and uh, do his import for the Dreamers Devin Marble smiling about it but I'm sure there's a tinge of nervousness now Now, if you're the Kings, you got to go to your inbound first look shot. There's no two, three, four seconds on the floor to make a move, unlike Zoe Shouts buzzer beater. This makes that last Kenny Manigold out of bounds so huge. As per customary in the FIBA rulebook, 
Offices of the scores table. The Doughboy number 26, his first time in the game. He's defending the inbounder. Brandon Gilbeck in the painted area. The Dreamers are trying to call a short timeout, but they don't have any as the defensive team. The personnel for the Kings is JJ Yang Jimmy. Joseph Lynn, Mullins, and Mandy Gold. And now it looks like we have a little bit of a uh, personnel situation. Because it was a short timeout, substitutions are not supposed to be made. So Marshawn quickly drawing it up for uh, Su Su Shin. I'd imagine perhaps the play call might be changing entirely. And on the Dreamer side, I think the referees need to pay attention because Brandon Gilbeck is out. Trying to get Susushin's attention. He's now heading to the Plus League logo. Kenny Manigold to inbound. Got three shooters out there. Ball into the basket, no. Now Jimmy with a desperate heave. But the last buzzer, that will be it as the Dreamers took a roller coaster ride. They come away with a victory, 103 to 101 here on the road. Oh, that fourth quarter sure went all kinds of ways. Kind of see the seesaw in the quarter to quarter score. I don't know if I would describe it as very well played, but certainly a gutsy performance, certainly very dramatic, and uh, something the uh, Kings can go to the drawing board again for. And uh, certainly another test of the rule books when it comes to substitution or no substitution when it comes to those 30 second timeouts. Well, after all that, we're being informed that. Uh, Chris McCullough will be the man on the headset. He's going to get the interview from uh, Mark and Aaron on the Mandarin broadcast. How you doing? Asked about the final defensive play Honestly, against Manny I don't even remember the play, but I mean, if you're talking about it, hopefully it was a good play, to be honest. Now asked about his scoring prowess during the game. Uh, I just I, I got hot early. I got my shots going. Coach was giving me the ball. Uh, I, I got it. I got it. My my uh, my jumping form and everything was looking good in the first half. We was playing good basketball. Asked about um, playing. It's not really no mixed feelings. Just come out here, do my job, uh, play the best of my abilities, is hit open shots and play basketball. Asked about bouncing back from the last. Well, you know, we, we lost a, a bad game last weekend, but you know, we went to practice. We figured out what we need to do. We corrected the little things that we came in and we think we have to do. We did our job. Asked to shout out a teammate. Uh, which teammate? Uh, I, I feel like collect collectively we all we all uh, did our jobs on the floor. Whatever coach helps to do, we all uh, played the uh, big part in the win tonight. Yes, sir. Thanks to Chris McCullough for joining the post-game coverage. There's the uh, Bronx accent. Some of the enthusiastic Dreamers fans showing their support with uh, some support cheer towels hung on the uh, rafters on the first section as after a hard-fought game, McCullough will head to the locker rooms in celebration. More plus the coverage in the uh, post-game thanks to the uh, media that and press has that have uh, come forth for this particular matchup. Oh man, there was sure a lot to break down from the game. I need to take a break and I'll wrap things up after the following messages with you, the viewing audience.
Well, credit to Kenny Manigault and the Kings in Manigault's particular case. Only two points through the first three quarters, but 12 points in the fourth quarter, really boosting the Kings back into the game. And I bring that up because, indeed, what might be looked at for the Kings video studies is that second to last possession between him and Byron Mullins trying to find something but the ball going out of bounds. Long replay review for the Dreamers and a, a advantageous, adventurous uh, Gilbeck free throw trip later. And then a defended inbound. Dreamers end up with a victory and they'll head home to host the Steelers. As there you see, Aaron and uh, Mark have a good time on the broadcast. Back to the Dreamers side. They end up getting six players scoring in double digits, of course, led by McCullough. And one big key in the game, they're 61 rebounds to the Kings, only 46 in the game. So all in all, those all add up to the final results or the final progression of things that end up in the game. Three-point shooting for the two teams ended up below 30 percentage. And the... Uh, Dreamers did indeed shoot the free throw shot better, 27 for 33 versus the Kings, 21 for 31. And all in all, a collective effort by both teams and a really exciting guy. Happy to be a broadcast, be a part of it. So on behalf of our broadcasters, Aaron and Mark, FTV and Bosa, our partners and the six teams in the Plus League in the league office, I'm Ryan Chen and we'll see you in the next one. Oh.